as Chris Lewis to Brian Lara. He's gone for the ball, and there it is. Brian Lara has done it. The ball rockets into the boundary fence. The new world record holder is Brian Charles Lara of Trinidad and Tobago. What a on April the 18th, 1994, Brian Lara of Trinidad and the West Indies dispatched to the St. John's Recreation Ground boundary cricket's most venerable record. His innings of 375 surpassed the 36-year-old mark of Sir Garfield Sobers to become the highest individual score in Test match history. Absolutely brilliant. Fittingly, Lara's famous compatriot was on hand in Antigua to congratulate the dashing young prince. I've got a lot of admiration for him. I think that he's a very nice boy. I have watched him from the time he started, when he first came to Barbados. And from that day that I saw him, I was, I was shouting his praise. And I was saying to people that he's going to be the best player in the West Indies and the world has ever seen. And people laughed at me. People said, oh, he's got ability, but he's not that good. You know, but he's always had it. And he's just, he's just come to the forefront. And it will continue. Sobers, speaking immediately after Lara's innings, could not have foreseen how quickly Brian would continue his assault on English bowlers. Signed by Warwickshire County Cricket Club as their overseas player for the 1994 summer, Lara helped the team to an unprecedented three domestic trophies in a season. That's how all right he is. It's clear now. He also helped himself to cricket's other great individual batting record. In 1959, Pakistani Hanif Mohammed scored 499 in a match in Karachi to record the highest ever first-class innings. On June the 6th, 1994, Lara surpassed that score when he registered a massive 501 against Durham. I tried to meet him in England uh, this summer, but uh, unfortunately I couldn't get through so, and uh, he was too busy, uh, maybe getting money, <laughs> accounting money, <laughs> counting money, but uh, I, I couldn't meet him, but uh, I did spoke to him on the same evening. I rang him up from Karachi to Edgebaston Cricket County Ground and I congratulated him. You've been through with Brian. All the, things that got. the life of Brian has become a merry-go-round of money-making opportunities as his agents seek to cash in on the legend of Lara. Every day is a busy day. He's going to be doing two commercials down there. Yeah, I've spoken to them. I've spoken to India to sort out the gaps when he's, when he's not playing cricket there, to sort out the commercials. Out here, Brian. A photo call by Tower Bridge in London, attired in pinstripes and bowler hat, is all a million miles from the village of Cantaro in Trinidad, where Brian was born 25 years ago, one of 11 children. Outside the family home, the street is full of kids hoping to grow up to be like Brian. While on the porch, Mother Pearl gazes at the family photo album full of pictures of Brian, whose precocious talent was recognised and nurtured from a very early age. At the age of six, Brian's father Bunty enrolled his son at the Harvard Cricket Club in Port of Spain. Luxurious facilities they were not, but Lara didn't mind. It's not the best, but um, I mean, you make it too. You make whatever facilities you have to. And um, I, I am very thankful for those days because sometimes things come very easy or things are so organized that you know, you're not really giving 100% or you, the fight isn't there to, you know, to succeed. You know, we played in bad conditions sometimes or with bad cricket bats and gloves and stuff like that, but you make it do. And at the end of the day, you know, you know exactly what you want in life and you know you work towards achieving it. Even at the age of 16, the multi-talented Lara knew exactly what he wanted. Despite showing a lot of ability as a soccer player, Brian gave up the sport to concentrate all his efforts on cricket. That decision paid early dividends as Lara set numerous records, scoring seven centuries in one season of inter-school competition. 
He made his first class debut before he was 19 years old, but had to wait three years before becoming a regular in the West Indian team. The boy who hated losing his wicket became a man who would never give it up. is also a dummy, but the best kind of dummy. He's now famous enough to be immortalized in wax by the internationally renowned Madame Tussauds. Lara is not only sculpted in wax, his name is also cast in gold. And woven in cloth as well. Back home in Trinidad, Brian has achieved regal status. Shot call is there. In the sport of Kings, a thoroughbred has been named in his honour. Lara's not just a winner on the track, he's been given a huge plot of land by the Trinidadian government upon which to build his palace. But it's cutting back a bit instead of going straight as we wanted it right down yesterday. The Lara Empire extends way beyond the boundaries of Britain and the Caribbean. He's been crowned king in India, where he even achieved the ultimate honour of captaining his country. And in the crown colony of Hong Kong, Lara provided the main attraction at last year's International Sixes Tournament. Everybody wants the royal seal of approval. And even prime ministers praise the powers of this potentate. One of the best there is, isn't he? It's the sheer, it, it's, it, it's, his, it's his back lift that I found fascinating. And he clearly sees the ball very early in flight and hits the ball to all parts of the ground. He's a joy to watch. He's a role model. They love him. They are going to want to emulate him. They want, they want, they're going to want to grow, to be Lara. He told them, yeah, listen, I mean just now, that uh, he, he started just at that age. So that is going to stick in their minds, that one day I am going to be that Lara myself. Politicians may use the opening of a sports centre in Soweto for their own ends, but the biggest honour for the kids is to carry the great man's bag. Lara's presence galvanises the township's youth. His easy charm and electric skills embody the future of the sport. No, no offence in parting. I'm just pushing your back at the ball. Respect the earth and your muscle I don't think I would ever realise how good I am until maybe the end of my career because at some stage he hears the Gary Silver say, you know, I think this young boy is going to be one of the best batsmen in the world. How at 17 or 18 when he first saw me, how could he, you know, say something like that? I mean, it got me frightened, but it gave me the inspiration to keep going. <laughs> 